Greetings, Guardians. My name is Byfear. So if you know anything about the characters at the heart of the season of The Haunted, it's that Keitel is Kallus' daughter, and she does not like him. As the heir apparent to the Cabal Empire, Keitel is a powerful figure, but her rise to power is one that was in stark opposition to her father. She literally helped to depose him, after all. But there's always a lingering question as to why that is. The reality of it is that for the longest time, the best ideas we had as to their opposition were that the opposition was purely born out of animosity and differences. Yes, Keitel was more traditionally cabal in the sense that she enjoyed practices of the military and martial discipline, something that her father railed against. But that alone should not be enough to turn her against her father. It seems clear that there's something bitter at the heart of their relationship. A resentment that ultimately led to the betrayal that would define this father and daughter. Today, we're going to talk about the relationship between Callus and Keitel, and what eventually led to the events of the Midnight Coup. A couple of small notes for all of you first, though. The lore on the dungeon duality is inbound, but first I want to go ahead and get this video out there, because this is, well, it's a topic that's video adjacent as far as the dungeon is concerned, but... The dungeon itself is... yeah, the video is going to take a little bit longer. There are more secrets that I need to plow out of that place and to truly get to. So, we'll get to that video when we have time, likely tomorrow, but we will see. This video is also bound to catch some people's attention, and I warn you, whilst there are no words that lend any description to things, if just the idea of an animal being killed is something that turns your stomach, this isn't a video for you. This is very much a video that will make people angry. Not at me, but at Callus. And rightly so. If it wasn't for the requirements of my job and the need to monetize this video, I would be using many fair insults to describe Callus. So keep that in mind. I give that to you as a disclaimer ahead. Nothing is described in detail, but if that kind of story distresses you, this isn't a video for you. But anyway... Let's get on to the story and really talk about, well, where it sort of should have ended. For everyone to really understand why this story is worth telling, you need to know that. You need to understand the event that was the climax of the contested relationship between Callus and his daughter, namely the Midnight Coup. This may well be one of the most important political moments in Cabal history, as it saw Callus deposed and replaced by Gaul, formerly the Primus of the Red Legion, who was an exalted gladiator that was ascended to a rank of military prestige after Callus noticed him within the arenas of Toro Battle. He was known as the Ghost Primus from that point onwards on account of his white albino skin. But as Gaul rose in the ranks, it turned out that his true purpose was in fact not to serve as a gladiator or to be a great primus of the legions of the Cabal Empire, but instead would be to ascend. Gaul would depose Callus and would ascend from primus of the Red Legion to the first ever Cabal Dominus, a rank that seems to have been invented by Gaul, although this is not clear. But this move was not something that was accomplished alone. Gaul was a part of a group of eight conspirators that assisted each other in the overthrowing of Emperor Callus and all plotted his downfall with a degree of equality, whether they did so out of spite or need or desires untold. They were as follows. Lictor Sheatet, the former Cabal bodyguard to the Emperor. Iskar Lafantor, a tea merchant that Callus doted on. Otzot, the Imperial Dreamer and Freeborn Scion, who supposedly felt threatened by the decree of Callus that all other Scions should be Freeborn, something which would have lowered her status, if Callus is to be believed. Umuna Rath, the Primus of all Legions, the greatest Cabal military leader of the time, and also the mentor to the Imperial Princess. Ideally Imoli Imoli, the Everjoy a former colossus and a planner of revelry who would assist in smoothing the people over and allowing a smoother transition of power. The former Praetorian consul who had been wronged by Gaul and castrated on the white sands of Toro Bartle's surface upon his coronation. 
Dominus Gaul, the ghost Primus, who would ultimately ascend, and Keitel, the Princess Imperial, and daughter of Callus. Yes, that's right. Keitel, Callus' own daughter, helps to overthrow him. But again, why do this? As I said earlier, she was fond of things that her father tried to pull the Empire away from, things that were traditionally considered a part of Cabal culture. She was the student of Amuna Rath, the Primus of all legions, who taught her to be a pilot and a tactician. But even divisions such as these do not lead to a betrayal of this magnitude. So, what did? The answer? It's quite ugly. But ultimately, the answer was jealous cruelty. Let's provide a little context and talk a little bit more about Cabal culture before we proceed. And in particular, War beasts. They can be seen as the equivalent to the Iron Lord's wolves, or our own modern-day versions of dogs, but for the Cabal, there's actually a lot more to it than that. Take a listen to Callus as he describes it for us in his own words. War beasts are a celebrated part of Cabal culture. They were native to our homeworld, Torobatala, when such a world still existed. In my life, each beast was bred to serve a specific handler from birth. The bond between war beast and soldier was profound. I assume Gaul saw fit to change that, turn them into something that is a military asset and not a partner. A shame. So yeah, war beasts form strong bonds with their partners, and they're revered in Cabal culture for their loyalty. But it goes deeper than all of that. War beasts were incorporated in traditional Cabal rites from ancient times, such as the Rite of Proving, which has, as best we know, existed in the Cabal's culture for thousands of years in one form or another, even if the martial portion of it was gone during the reign of Callus. Those with the correct aptitude as a fighter in the old times of the Cabal were even able to bring trained war beasts into this most sacred of rites, and they would fight alongside their masters. It needs to be understood that these beasts have ingrained themselves in Cabal culture to a degree that is as deep as dogs have for us, if not deeper. Imagine, if you will, having a dog that is specifically bred for you and you alone. Now imagine that everyone's dog is that. Imagine that that's your culture. This is your entire society. That's the Cabal. They love their dogs. Seriously. Like, they really love their dogs. And so did Keitel. When Keitel was born, Callus was overjoyed at his daughter, and I think it's fair to say that, in his own way, he truly did love her. But being Emperor, he had a bit of a sour streak. His entire attitude towards life is one of opulence and waste, in a sense, but also it's one of selfishness, one that is entirely self-centered. He would shower gifts upon his daughter, but it's clear that these gifts in some manner were given as a sort of understanded and expected gesture that was supposed to be reciprocated with the affection of a loving daughter. Say thank you for your present, in other words. That doesn't quite describe it, though, because Callus, at the end of things, is a jealous, jealous man. And Callus was also an emperor that was naturally distant. So distant that he had no time for his own daughter in many occasions. These gifts weren't just a way of ensuring that his daughter would continue to love him. They were also, in a sense, a proxy for him. The best thing he could think to do for his child. But they were no substitute for a present and attentive father. One who would listen to the concerns of their daughter. One who would genuinely be there. For them in moments of strife or emotional turmoil. One day, one of these gifts would fill that void though. It was a faithful war beast that Keitel would come to call Mylos, and the young princess Imperial received this gift with a degree of joy that was overwhelming. She loved Mylos, as I'm sure any child that age would love their first pet. But Keitel's love for Mylos began to outstrip her affection for her father. And how should Emperor Callus respond? 
like a normal healthy parent who upholds and celebrates a healthy relationship with a pet animal and the happiness it provides their child. Right? Right? Unfortunately not. What happened to Milos is explained in Callus's own words and in the lore of the new dungeon SMG, Unforgiven. There are no distressing descriptions as I said at the beginning, but it's clear from everything that I've said thus far that the extent of Callus's jealousy are uglier than we could have imagined. Take a listen to this. Huh. Cabal really do love their war beasts. I wonder if this was a specific one. Me love. Kaito's first war beast. I gifted it to her when she was just a girl. She was so very attached to it. Too attached. I had it butchered. It felt insulting for her to love an animal more than her father. Kalos killed Milos because he was jealous of how much his daughter loved him. I don't want you to imagine that trauma that must come from the realization that your father murdered your own dog, or the equivalent thereof, but I want you to remember how central war beasts are to Cabal culture. They are respected, they are revered, they are loved, they are bred for one individual from birth, they are good boys and girls, damn it! So yeah, this is more than just painful for Keitel, this is deeply scarring. This is something she will remember, it will leave a mark. Keitel's own thoughts on that moment and that course of action that her father took are displayed in the lore tab of the SMG from the Duality Dungeon, Unforgiven, which reads as follows. Never forget. I was a child when my father gave the war beast to me. Milos, I named him. Young like I was, wide-eyed and just as unable to see what was in front of him. My father had always been absent. The demands of the throne saw to that. But he had never been unkind, so I chose to forgive him. Back then, he showed me affection by proxy and spared no expense in securing the best tutors and caretakers to watch over me. He lavished me with extravagant gifts. Milos was the one I appreciated the most. Milos and I were nearly inseparable, and I would spend every possible moment with him, awake or asleep. I trained him. I fed him from my own plate. Even now, when I close my eyes, I can feel him curled up on top of my chest, his head buried in his paws, his lungs swelling with every breath as he slumbers and dreams. Is it any wonder I grew to love him more than I did my father? Milos was my constant, loyal companion. Until the day I returned from my studies to my room. And he was gone. A servant handed me a gilded letter, penned by my father, explaining why he had Milos killed. I tore it to shreds, tears streaming down my face. When I looked up, I saw the servant weeping too, and I knew that she had been the one forced to do the deed. I took her hands in mine and said, I forgive you. Words I swore Callus would never hear from me again. The thing about Keitel is that she had an energetic and indomitable spirit, and she threw herself after this moment into the studies of war that would be available to her, with a ferocity and fire that would surprise and delight all of her mentors and tutors, from Domina Gaul to Amuna Wrath. I can only imagine that a part of what fueled that was spite. Spite for a father that had killed the companion that had been better to her than he had the one that he had been jealous of, the one that had truly shown her affection, in a way that he never could. Keitel is clearly one not to mince words or to fool around when it comes to the real chances for revenge, and when a chance for revenge did arrive, she decided to take her part in it. We can tell this thanks to her role in the Midnight Coup as described by Callus. She alone could have stopped the coup in its tracks. She was in a position to do so, a position of real power over all the fates of all the Cabal on Toro Battle. But when the time came, she did not forgive her father. She took her revenge in hand and crushed any chance of the coup failing. Potentially, quite literally. Callus recited the story and its details to us when he entreated us first to kill his daughter 
all the way back at the release of Destiny 2. His notes on Keitel are told to us according to the letters sent to us about all the different conspirators of the Midnight Coup that Callus wished us to assassinate. The moment of her betrayal supposedly went as follows, and is surrounded by the following detail. Oh, beloved, what have you done? I only wanted an heir who would love what I love. Sweet air and song, and the grand work of architects, feasts and ecstasies, worlds of delight. Are these things not best? Was I inattentive, child? No, I was not. But the more I tried to show you what I loved, the more you turned away. First, those games of war and conquest that you played with a moon. Then the pressure armor you took to wearing at home, as if the palace were an alien world and the revels toxic. I was so happy when you became a star pilot. I thought you'd see our great cabal in all its glory and variety, and understand the joy of peace. But when you returned to Torobatl, you would hide away with a moon, whispering about threats that gathered on our frontier. I could have stopped the coup. You alone knew of my special arrangement. But when I raced to my throne to give the signal, you were there. You sat on my throne with the signal in your fist. And when I reached out to beg, you crushed the bone in your gauntlet. Father, you said, I will not be weak. You mistook my joy for weakness. You understood nothing of who I am. So my dear daughter must die. Only in flight is she ever happy. Only when she's happy can she be reached. I could never reach her. Perhaps you will. Fun fact, that bone is likely to be the bone of an Ahamkara, an Ahamkara hunted by a certain powerful scion who had been gifted the bow Leviathan's breath. That's the best guess, at least, but for something that's made of bone to be a signal, something that could potentially stop the entirety of the Midnight Coup, I have to assume by all measures that that was indeed the bone of an Ahamkara. But all that doesn't matter. Callus didn't seem to see the issue with killing Keitel's war beast, Mylos. And frankly, good riddance to him then. Callus was not a good father. A poor father is one thing, and a poor father who can't even see their own failures is entirely another. If he wasn't even a man obsessed with the darkness, we would still perhaps judge Callus direly. We didn't need a reason to support Keitel in the first place, but I think some of us have tied our fates a little too freely to the Emperor of the Cabal, much like Katabases did. If you are still somehow a supporter of Callus, I'd show you all this and ask you to rethink your position, lest you should end up like Katabases, or like poor Milos. There are other reasons, of course, to abandon the Emperor, not least his contempt for us Guardians, and something like this is revealed to us in the lore of the Duality Dungeon, lore that I'll be diving into as time progresses. There's a lot to go through, but I'm looking to do a big overview of the dungeon tomorrow. If we don't get to that by tomorrow, it'll be another video, but regardless, we're going to be having daily content throughout the rest of the week, and throughout the rest of the weeks going forward. There is a lot for us to cover. In the meantime, though, I don't know if I should say I hope you enjoyed the video, but I hope the video was enlightening, and if it did enlighten you as to the reasons why Keitel hates her father, go ahead and leave a like, and if you want to go ahead and show further support, go ahead and leave some commentary down below. Tell you what, let's go ahead and make this cheery. Tell me your best memories of your pets. Mine has got to be with Turbo, my dog, my wife's dog originally. I'll never forget the moment when he first got comfortable enough to sit with me on a sofa, because he's a tiny but majestic Chihuahua Min Pin Mix. Lovely little boy. Aww, so sweet. Tell me what your favourite pet moments are down below in the comments section. Let's change things to a happier topic and show that we are indeed better dog parents than Callus would be. Of course, if you want more Destiny lore content, Go ahead and hit subscribe and the bell next to subscribe to turn on those email notifications. 
But as per usual, know that your viewership is quite enough for me, and that in the meantime, my name has been My Name is Bife. Parodasia Arastra. I'll see you, Starside.